Hey everybody, hey good to see you tonight. It's been a beautiful day all day it has. long. And it's warm. It feels like yeah. summertime now. We'll well, I let think everybody... it, it's getting close. Yeah. We've had a cool spring is what well, it I is was, too. I was thankful for Sunday. Sunday was still really nice. And so we're praying for a nice Sunday this Sunday uh, for our parking lot service. Y'all pray that God holds the rain back and yes. uh, we're able to have a nice, cool meeting. That's right. Well, let's get started into our devotion tonight. So the name of our devotion is called Operation Rescue. Rescue. Say it again. Operation, Operation Rescue. Rescue. Look, have you ever been rescued? Have you ever been rescued? I'm sure I probably have. I know I have even, more than and once. I didn't even know it. Yeah, I, I mean, I know I have. I remember, oh, I remember I'm when I was, uh, well, I might not ought to tell that story. Well, now you're done opened up the door. Well, I was a teenager and uh, I got into a little bit of a race with a boy from our school. Anyway, if he hadn't hit his brakes, I wouldn't be here today. So Well, you can tell that story. That was, maybe people that was learn a, not to do that. Well, I, I learned. And uh, he what he did is he pulled out to go around me, and then, I, I pull, and then he slowed down. I pulled out to go around him, and he sped up and sped up and would not let me get around him. And then at the last moment, he hit his brakes. Wow. And I just missed head on and I'm telling you I thought to myself I'm never going to try and do that again well what about when we were in Trinidad like glass bottom boat oh that was <laughs> well they said it was a glass bottom boat we had a free ad, day he, he always advertised it well and when we go to another country usually there's one free day especially when we're that close to the ocean that everyone can just rest before we head back I try the next I day. try and have something you know that they can go sightseeing and uh, set something up for the group and so they'd advertised the glass bottom boat and I thought oh this would be neat and I got there and it was a fiberglass bottom boat <laughs> and I thought really guys and then we got in it and man they took us down this it was like this river that let into the ocean but it was real narrow and man there were it looked like something out of a monster it did. movie it the roots these, of the trees were like over you and there was crabs, crabs crawling up the roots of the trees of over your head. It and was, oh my gosh. Coming back in and I kept thinking, I thought, man, this boat is keeps taking on sure water. There was, there was all kinds of something. critters. And, and, and I saw the edge of that boat, the edge of the water kept getting up closer and closer to literally c coming into the boat and just sinking us. And I thought, man, and one of the guys finally looked and he goes, you know, one of the the we're people, filling out water. Remember the water started yeah, coming into the boat? But one of the people that ran the operation, he said, ooh, good thing. He said, we get off right up here another 10 minutes and we underwater. And I thought, man. So we were almost stranded, but, I mean, that was a, a God rescue. Yeah. He took care of us. Well, one time I was in Rick's truck, and it's a stick shift. So uh, i just gotten back from shopping at this little consignment store. And when she should have been in because <laughs> the weather was bad. <laughs> oh, but anyway, so Roads I got... Roads were iced up. Yes, they were ice covered. And let me explain no, something about No, but you know what? It started, it, st it started happening when I was oh, in the was store. It? Well, so, this truck is my real light weight. As a matter of fact, those of you who come to church know it. It's still here. I still have it. But in, during wintertime, usually what I do is I, you know, will put blocks in the back of it or I've shoveled dirt in the back of it before to get weight in so it'll hold the road otherwise it's all over the road and she took off in that truck and the weather was fine and then all of a sudden it started icing well and so i got up i started driving up this hill which is the overpass to interstate 55 and i couldn't get up the hill when i tried to shift it it was just taking me like i was going to go down the, this, embankment. the embankment i mean it was how how far would you oh, say it's steep, man. It's a real several steep feet down and it, it was it like, would have rolled the truck yeah right? and I, I couldn't go any further and I was thinking you know of course there's traffic behind me but I couldn't go forward I mean anytime I did it was veering me off down this embankment and all of a sudden to, a guy got out of his truck there was two guys behind me in a truck and one of the guys got out that was probably 200 pounds plus and he jumped in the back of the truck and I got the weight that I needed and it got me over the hill 
And I was like, you're my hero. <laughs> but I mean, he rescued me. I, I mean, I was at a standstill. I didn't know what to do. Right. But uh, so you're, you're my hero. You're my number one hero. <laughs> See how he was looking at me? I was wondering how she was going to get out of that one, folks. No, <laughs> no but he was that day. He, I mean, I'm telling you what. I, I mean, I was just praying, God, I need your help. You know, so, yeah. I, he said it. If no. you were there, you would have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I know you would have. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, let's go to our, um, our scripture. Psalms 35, 17 through 18 says, Lord, how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give you thanks in the great congregation. I will praise you among much people. Amen. And so that's David's cry to the Lord because he needed the rescue. You know, David was always... It seemed like he needed God to rescue him. You know, I think about Psalms 107. Um, there's several places in Psalms 107 that says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all of my fears. So the delivery there was to rescue him from all of his fears. Well, one of the things we learned about David is David knew to cry out to God. He, he wasn't arrogant to, you know, point where I'm going to handle this on my own. I'm a yeah. king. I'm a warrior. He, 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 he cried out to God. Yeah, psalm after psalm after psalm is David yes. crying to God and asking for his help. And so it's something we need to learn from. Right. Think about Daniel. This verse, Daniel 6 and 27 says, He delivers and rescues, and he works signs and wonders in heaven and in earth. And he said, Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the lions? Amen. Amen. There's still a lot of roaring lions in the world today. And what we have to do is... Turn God our, shut the lion's mouth. Yeah, exactly. And when we turn our face toward God, God's able to take care of us. But we have to. Uh, that's why it's so important. The scripture says to acknowledge Him yes. in all of our ways, and He'll direct our path. You don't want to find yourself in a situation where you get yourself into a place, and then you start calling on God, where He could have kept you from getting there in the first place. So it's important that we always acknowledge Him. That we go to him for help. I was thinking of an outing we had years ago, a church outing. Oh man. Taking everybody canoe riding riding. It had been it had been raining and the place was called uh, Gypsy Bridge. And uh, so I'd called, we'd set this up for our young people and I had called ahead to make sure it was clear and he said, "Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's it's perfect." It, and so we get there, and we get the canoes, and I'm getting everyone in the canoes, you know, and they're in the canoes two by two, uh, kind of like the ark. You know? and so they're going down the river, and I'm the last one to get in, and by the time I get in the canoe, man, I hear people screaming and hollering and carrying on, and I'm thinking, boy, they're having a ball down there. Well, I come around the bend in my canoe, and I realize they're not having a party, man. It's a panic attack. Mm. There's a tree that had laid down across the river, yeah. and it was taking their canoe. The current was taking their canoe into the tree and flipping them over. And so I, I got my canoe and pushed it up to the shore, and I had uh, Tim Brown with me, with, you know, nephew. my nephew, and he was a little guy then, and I set him up on shore, then I jumped into the river, and I had on my life preserve. And when I jumped into the river, I let it carry me. Actually, I don't know if I did have, I don't think I did I don't I know did if have, you did or not. I don't think I had Probably a life should have preserve. had one on. But I jumped in, and it carried me down to where, the current carried me down to where they were at, and I grabbed hold of the tree and started, you know, gathering children out of uh, oh, it's terrible. that tree. and. Anyway, so, you know, we got past that and, you know, got rescued. And What about the girl? Then, well, that was, oh. so we went on. We decided to go ahead and go on. Now, some went back because they were so frightened by that. And, you know, we couldn't blame them. But we went on down the trip. And when it came time to get out of the river, there was a girl that had on a life preserver like this. And she got out of the boat and got into the current and it started to take her away and she man her eyes panicked and and she started to cry out and i jumped in the middle of the river again you got to understand by now i am wore out man <laughs> i jump in the middle and i get up to her and i grab her and she's you know she's so thankful because i rescued her <laughs> what she didn't know was that she really rescued me i was so wore out man i couldn't stay afloat so i had a hold of her 
and her that life jacket hanging on her to stay afloat myself. So I said, okay, just relax, just relax. And I was thinking, oh, thank God she's got a life jacket on. So don't get in the river without a life jacket. Well, you know, I also was thinking of Abigail in Scripture. Yeah. How that through her rescue. He lit, Abigail literally rescued her entire household. Tell who Abigail is. I know they probably know, but just in case. In, in Scripture, David, you know, he, he's on the run from Saul, and he is camped out, and he's been around this man's flock whose name is Nabal. And he's been like a wall of protection for his servants. Nobody messed with his flock because David's servants were in that field. So Nabal was having a big party. It was time to shear the sheep, and David was ha or Nabal was having a big party. And David sent word and asked, you know, if he would send something for his men. And instead of being gracious and kind, Nabal went off on the servant and said, "Who is David? And who is the son of Jesse?" You know, that I should give my meat and my drink and, you know, and, and all the... And man, he, he literally, I mean, he just rails against him. So when the servant went and told David what Nabal had said, David grew angry and he said, in, in vain, I've kept everything this man has. He, in other words, in plain English, he's saying, man, I, I protected his flocks yeah. for nothing. I we, we treated him kindly and this is what he's done. And... And, you know, honor of that, to treat us like that. And he told everyone, he said, strap on your swords. Mm -hmm. And he had planned not to let one person live from Nabal's household. Well, the servants that were there when David's servant came, Nabal's servants heard what Nabal said. They ran to Abigail, which was Nabal's wife, and told her what he did. And they said, you know how foolish he can get in and... and how he, he can't speak peaceably to anyone. So Abigail immediately acted and she told them, she said, you go gather me figs, get me clusters of raisins, get me some wine, kill a calf and bring it all together. And she rides out to meet David. And by now David is riding in with his men and she jumped off her uh, beast. I can't remember if she's wearing Riding if a donkey, she or, a, if or she, she was, was wearing, wearing a donkey a... or a horse, no, she, but she jumps off of it and and kneels down and begins to beg David's forgiveness. Yeah. And she said, "I didn't see when your servant came. I'm asking you to please show kindness and forgiveness." And he said, "Nabal's a fool." And and so anyway, by her doing that, she rescued that whole household. And David told her, he said, if, he said, you know, bless the Lord that sent you out to meet me today because had you not come to meet me there wouldn't have been one man living in all of Nabal's house and so because she responded to the unction of God and to a warning she saved her whole house you know it's kind of like I don't know if you've ever been in a place before where you just feel checked that you need to check something we were you know you you feel like something's about to happen and I remember when we were traveling and you know, we had the motor home, and we always pulled the car behind it. Oh, yeah. I and, forgot about that. And I I had this overwhelming feeling that I needed to stop and check the car because the car was on a rack. You know, we were pulling. He usually had and, me go check the car. Yeah, well, she would usually look out. <laughs> he would say, we hit a bump, he'll say, he would say, honey, go check the car. Well, go check the car the had been welded. It was, it was, you know, those those things usually pivot like this, but this one had been welded together. So the straps held it down. But when you turned, it pulled on those straps. Well, those straps had a tendency of loosening. And I was in Mississippi. Man, I remember where I was at. I, I, I had this uncontrollable feeling that I needed to stop immediately. I pulled off the road. Yeah. And Debbie said, what are you doing? I said, I've got to go check the car. I got out and went back there. Those straps had come completely off. Wow. They were just over the wheel. They weren't fastened down anymore. It was that. a hand of God that that car had not it come flying off of there. It could have killed someone. That's right. So when you feel those urgings, that's God trying to rescue you. That's right. You know, so be sensitive to those. Well, what about rescue? Have you ever rescued someone? You know, and you know that God has used you to do that. I was thinking about this, that they say that if you put a frog in hot water, what does it do? It, it jumps Jump out. Up. It jumps out. But if you... Um, if you put him in cold water and then gradually add warm, 
until it's hot, it dies a slow death and not realize it. You have to rescue him out of that. And so it's like people that, that are experiencing, you know, turmoil in their life or mental or physical abuse, uh, they they can adapt. You know, like I've heard you say a, right. a woman that's that that's A been, woman that's been physically abused is afraid to leave the situation because it's the only situation she knows. She's adapted to her surroundings. So rather than trying to run from that or get help, she just stays there and yeah. takes the beating. And that shouldn't happen. Right. And then it's not until somebody that, that has, that's standing in the gap and that rescues them. And understand when we, we say, God, I, you know, I want to, I want to win somebody to you. I want to rescue. He's going to put you in that situation, you know, to help right. pull somebody out. Um, so this, this reminds me of something that happened to me a few years ago. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, you all know if he starts yawning, I'm going to start yawning <laughs> too. Okay, so um, I was in a store called Drug Emporium in, in uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. And I went to the perfume counter because, I mean, they you could get perfumes real, oh, cheap. real like name and brand. And it was a name brand perfume. It yeah, wasn't you could get them real cheap. So, it man, was a real deal. Every time we were through Little Rock, I would say, let's go to Drug Emporium. So um, I went up to the counter, and the employee, she was probably, well, she was 18 years old. And when I got up to her, the Lord dealt with me to give her a scripture. And when I did, tears began to, you know, well up in her eyes. And then all of a sudden, there was a line. I wanted to minister with her. I wanted to go further with it. But there was a line that that uh, was behind me. And so I gave her the, the scripture on a card, and I said, I gave my phone number and I said, will you call me? I said, you can call me. And so um, about three weeks later, she called me. And her life was in turmoil. She, was, she just was ready to commit suicide. I mean, she, she was reaching out. She was at her lowest point. Mm -hmm. And so in, I went into my prayer closet with my phone and just began to minister with her and had the opportunity to, to rescue her, lead her Leaders to the Lord. Lord. And she... Look, she prayed through to the Holy Spirit. I mean, she began to, she, the joy of the Lord came upon her, and God totally saved her. Transformed well, her life. Transformed her life. It was wonderful. Well, then, three weeks after that, I was in my prayer closet, and it was on the 24th day of whatever month it was, because you know how there's a proverb for every day right. of the month. You know, pro goes to Proverbs 31. So this day was the 24th. And when I got to the 11th verse, this was in my, just in my devotion time, it says, forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death and those that are ready to be slain. If you say, behold, we, we knew it not, does not he that ponders the heart considers it? And he that keeps your soul, doesn't he not know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his work? So to break it down, when he said forbear, it means to restrain someone, hold them back. And then one translation it says those. This says ready to be slain. In one translation, translation it says that are stumbling to the slaughter, that they're drawn toward death, right. and they they're not realizing it. And so uh, uh, deliver there means to rescue. So he's saying, I want you to, to rescue them. Mm -hmm. Now, and if, then he goes on to say, if you say, I didn't know this, you know, say like if you know somebody and they need to be rescued. Right. And, and he, and he said, it. yeah, if you just ignore it and you're not planting seeds into their life. He said, if you say, I didn't know this, doesn't he, of course, that's speaking of God, ponders our heart and he considers it right. and he will reward you. Uh, he, he'll reward you according to your works. Well, then after I read that scripture, I just... I was so overwhelmed, you know, for the lost uh, to rescue someone that was hanging by a thread over the pit of hell. You know what I'm saying? And I just, tears were just dripping off my face and I just felt that burden for souls like I had never felt before. Well, you know what? I had my cell phone in my closet, apparently, because I got a, a phone call. I think it's is what it was, but I got a phone call. And on the other end, this lady said, hello she said this is she said is this Debbie McNeely and I said uh, yes it is she said my name is Mary she said you don't know who I am she said but I found your card in my daughter's purse she was killed last night in a car accident mm -hmm. this is the ha the girl named Hannah that was in drug emporium and she said I, I just 
you know, she was crying, but she said, I just need to know what this was about or because she saw it was a church right. card. And she said, and I, she just, I just needed to know if she, if what this conversation, if, if you've talked to her, what, you know, she just needed to know if she had peace with God before she died. And so in that moment, I said, God, please let me remember. Please let me remember that conversation. God brought that conversation back to me when I got to have the opportunity to to lead Hannah to the Lord. And uh, the la and so, you know, after I shared it, the lady, she felt so, uh, so thankful, you know, that, she, that her daughter received Christ into her life. And then she didn't want to hang up. She was, she was hanging on to every word I was saying. And so I knew I could go further with it. And so I began to minister with her mom and she ended up just uh, releasing the past and rededicated her life to the Lord over the phone. Wow. And so that was a powerful, a powerful rescue story. I could go on uh, all day and I mean for days and tell you stories, even, even more times like that, that you never know if it's they're. I mean, they're once right. again, they're hanging they're hanging by a thread. And so God is going to use us. And you know what? You're going to, there's people that are going to come into your path and God's going to use you to minister to them. And I mean, I, I think more than ever, you know, that's why, look, you can, you can throw this to someone. Yeah, absolutely. And it's up to them, obviously, to take that. You know, my mom, when uh, she was a kid, she was 12 years old, she was swimming in the ocean in California, and this boy was drowning drowning and so she um, was with her girlfriend and she had a, a life preserver and she th said throw this to that guy that's drowning and but you know what as soon as she let go of her life preser preserver an undertow took her under and she couldn't it, it, it held her down and she couldn't I mean she couldn't hold her breath any longer and all she could do was say Jesus help me and she said it just, before she knew it, she was on shore and the life, uh, or the lifeguard and the boy that was saved and everybody was standing around her when she looked up. And that's the thing, in order to rescue someone, we can't take off our life preserver. No. We can't take it off because, I mean, God is equipping us, but we have, just like, you know, the girl uh, that was in that river that we were in, you know, right. she had, somebody had that. If she, if she hadn't had hers on, we'd have both been in trouble. That's right. She was she was being pulled away, but this was keeping her afloat. And I'm telling you, we don't know how many instances we've been in where God was keeping us afloat when the devil was trying to take us under. That's right. And so we need someone there to rescue us, don't we? Yeah, and he's he's calling upon us. You know, I know we're, what we're experiencing now. You're hearing a lot about it in the news. And what these people need is God. They need they need His rescue. And you know what? He uses His people to do just that. Right. The, to know, bring them to Him. It reminds me of a story about a girl that was living with her grandmother. And she, she had a two-story house. And the little girl's bedroom was on the first story, or the second story, and her grandmother underneath. And all of a sudden that something had happened with the wiring in the house and it started fire. It was late in the night and flames were mm. pouring out of the house. And all of a sudden they they said, man, somebody call the fire department. Someone call the fire department. Well, a little girl appeared in the window and they were saying, call the fire department. And they, they called, but the fire department was nine minutes away. And that little girl was being engulfed in those flames and people were standing around screaming and hollering wow. didn't seem to know what to do when all of a sudden through that crowd a man came walking forward with a big extension ladder he threw that ladder up against the house extended it all the way and he climbed up that ladder flames licking his body coming out the windows and he he disappeared in the window the little girl had vanished. He, he disappeared in the window, and before long, he came out, had the little girl wrapped wow. up, carrying her down, flames just all around his body. He set her down on the ground, and, the, you know, he, the fire department came. They started ministering to the, you know, administering first aid to the girl, 
And unfortunately, the grandmother died in that fire. Well, several weeks passed after the, you know, they'd had the funeral and everything. Several weeks went by and they finally had a town meeting to try and decide the fate of the little girl. This was, you know, a tight knit community and people came together and they were trying to figure out what to do with the girl. And one person spoke and said, well, he, he was a farmer and he said, I could take the girl. He said, if she goes, if I raise her, she'll be insured a good, clean, healthy environment and, mm -hmm. you know, be raised around nature. A teacher spoke up and said, well, I can take her and if I take her, she'll be assured a good education. And then the wealthiest man in town spoke up and he said, well, I can take her. If I take her, she'll be assured all those things. And all the time that these people were talking about her fate, they said the little girl just looked down and she didn't look at anybody. She just kept her head down. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> the back door of the building opened and in walked this man. Mm -hmm. His arms were horribly scarred where he'd been burned by fire. He went up to the little girl and extended his hands. And when she still had her head down, and when she saw those arms, wow. she looked up and she jumped up out of that seat and jumped into his arms and hugged him and he held on to her. And everyone looked around and they knew in that instant who was supposed to take care of that little girl. Wow. The one that had loved her enough to risk his life for her. Is there any question? Is there any doubt about who's rescued us? The scars are the yes. proof. Yes. Nail prints in his hands. Yes. That he loved us more than words could say. That his love took on action and he rescued us. Wow. Aren't you glad for that kind of love? It's like tonight? that old song. <clears throat> he rescued me. He rescued me. He reached down his hand and he rescued me. I was lost and undone without God and his son. Then he reached down his hand and he rescued me. Let us pray for you now. Thank you, Jesus. Let him rescue you. Father, thank you for such a thank great you, love Jesus. that you rescued us. Hallelujah. You made a way for us, Father. Those that feel like they're struggling, God, that feel like they're going down for the last time, I just yes, speak Jesus. life to them in Jesus' name. I remind them and the devil that there's been a price that's been paid. The scars are the proof of the love. Lord, I thank you, God, yes. for that rescue. Yes, Jesus. I just ask that even now, thank Father, you, that Jesus. you lift them up, that you encourage and strengthen them and let them know that their best days are not behind them, but they're in front of them. Because when you're for us, no one can be against yes, us. Yes, we thank yes. you for that right now thank in you, Jesus, Jesus' name. So you know what? He's throwing you the life preserver. Reach out. And you know what? He's going to use you to put the life preserver on someone Amen. else. I believe that. Don't let go of yours. But just right. share it with That's someone right. else. We, we love, love you. you See you tomorrow night. Bye-bye.